The Qajar dynasty listen, Persian, Slesel Qajar Selsel Yi Qajar, also romanized as Gahar, Kadjar, Qachar etc., Azerbaijani, Qajar al was an Iranian royal dynasty of Turkic origin, specifically from the Qajar tribe, which ruled Persia Iran from 1794 to 1925. The state ruled by the dynasty was officially known as the Sublime State of Persia Persian, dwelt li iran dawlat e aliya Iran. The Qajar family took full control of Iran in 1794, deposing Lotf Ali Khan, the last Shah of the Zand dynasty, and reasserted Iranian sovereignty over large parts of the Caucasus. In 1796, Muhammad Khan Qajar seized Mashhad with ease, putting an end to the Afsharid dynasty, and Muhammad Khan was formally crowned as Shah after his punitive campaign against Iran's Georgian subjects. In the Caucasus, the Qajar dynasty permanently lost many of Iran's integral areas to the Russians over the course of the 19th century, comprising modern-day Georgia, Dagestan, Azerbaijan and Armenia. History Origins The Qajar rulers were members of the Karagos or Black Eye sect of the Qajars, who themselves were members of the Qajars tribe or Black Hats lineage of the Oghuz Turks. Qajars first settled during the Mongol period in the vicinity of Armenia and were among the seven Kizilbash tribes that supported the Safavids. The Safavids left Aran present-day Republic of Azerbaijan to local Turkic Khans and in 1554 Ganja was governed by Shavardi Sultan Ziadoglu Qajar whose family came to govern Karabakh in southern Aran. Qajars filled a number of diplomatic missions and governorships in the 16 to 17 th centuries for the Safavids. The Qajars were resettled by Shah Abbas I throughout Iran. The great number of them also settled in Asterabad present-day Gorgon, Iran near the southeastern corner of the Caspian Sea, and it would be this branch of Qajars that would rise to power. The immediate ancestor of the Qajar dynasty, Shah Kholi Khan of the Quvanlu of Ganja also spelled Govanlu or Govanlu, married into the Quvanlu Qajars of Asterabad. His son, Fath Ali Khan born c. 1685–1693 was a renowned military commander during the rule of the Safavid shahs Sultan Husayn and Tamasp II. He was killed on the orders of Shah Nader Shah in 1726. Fath Ali Khan's son Muhammad Hassan Khan Qajar was the father of Muhammad Khan Qajar and Hossein Kholi Khan Jahansu's Shah, father of Baba Khan, the future Fath Ali Shah Qajar. Muhammad Hassan Khan was killed on the orders of Karim Khan of the Zand dynasty. Within 126 years between the demise of the Safavid state and the rise of Nasser al-Din Shah Qajar, the Qajars had evolved from a shepherd warrior tribe with strongholds in northern Persia into a Persian dynasty with all the trappings of a Perso-Islamic monarchy. <laughs> rise to power Like virtually every dynasty that ruled Persia since the 11th century, the Qajars came to power with the backing of Turkic tribal forces, while using educated Persians in their bureaucracy." In 1779 following the death of Karim Khan of the Zand dynasty, Muhammad Khan Qajar, the leader of the Qajars, set out to reunify Iran. Muhammad Khan was known as one of the cruelest kings, even by the standards of 18th century Iran. In his quest for power, he razed cities, massacred entire populations, and blinded some 20,000 men in the city of Kerman because the local populace had chosen to defend the city against his siege. The Qajar armies at that time were mostly composed of Turkomans and Georgian slaves. By 1794, Muhammad Khan had eliminated all his rivals, including Lotf Ali Khan, the last of the Zand dynasty. He re established Persian control over the territories in the entire Caucasus. Aga Muhammad established his capital at Tehran, a village near the ruins of the ancient city of Rayy. In 1796, he was formally crowned as Shah. In 1797, Muhammad Khan Qajar was assassinated in Shusha, the capital of Karabakh Khanate, and was succeeded by his nephew, Fath Ali Shah Qajar. <laughs> Reconquest of Georgia and the rest of the Caucasus 
In 1744, Nader Shah had granted the kingship of Kartli and Kakheti to Timuras II and his son Erikal II, Heraclius II respectively, as a reward for their loyalty. When Nader Shah died in 1747, they capitalized on the chaos that had erupted in mainland Iran, and declared de facto independence. After Timuras II died in 1762, Erikal II assumed control over Kartli, and united the two kingdoms in a personal union as the Kingdom of Kartli Kakheti, becoming the first Georgian ruler to preside over a politically unified eastern Georgia in three centuries. At about the same time, Karim Khan Zand had ascended the Iranian throne. Erikal II quickly tendered his de jure submission to the new Iranian ruler, however, de facto, he remained autonomous. In 1783, Erikal II placed his kingdom under the protection of the Russian Empire in the Treaty of Georgievska. In the last few decades of the 18th century, Georgia had become a more important element in Russo-Iranian relations than some provinces in northern mainland Persia, such as Mazandaran or even Gilan. Unlike Peter the Great, Catherine the Great, the then ruling monarch of Russia, viewed Georgia as a pivot for her Caucasian policy, as Russia's new aspirations were to use it as a base of operations against both Iran and the Ottoman Empire, both immediate bordering geopolitical rivals of Russia. On top of that, having another port on the Georgian coast of the Black Sea would be ideal. A limited Russian contingent of two infantry battalions with four artillery pieces arrived in Tbilisi in 1784, but was withdrawn, despite the frantic protests of the Georgians, in 1787 as a new war against Ottoman Turkey had started on a different front. The consequences of these events came a few years later, when a strong new Iranian dynasty under the Qajars emerged victorious in the protracted power struggle in Persia. Their head, Aga Muhammad Khan, as his first objective, resolved to bring the Caucasus again fully under the Persian orbit. For Aga Muhammad Khan, the resubjugation and reintegration of Georgia into the Iranian Empire was part of the same process that had brought Shiraz, Isfahan, and Tabriz under his rule. He viewed, like the Safavids and Nader Shah before him, the territories no different than the territories in mainland Iran. Georgia was a province of Iran the same way Khorasan was. As the Cambridge history of Iran states, its permanent secession was inconceivable and had to be resisted in the same way as one would resist an attempt at the separation of Fars or Gilan. It was therefore natural for Aga Muhammad Khan to perform whatever necessary means in the Caucasus in order to subdue and reincorporate the recently lost regions following Nader Shah's death and the demise of the Zans, including putting down what in Iranian eyes was seen as treason on the part of the Valley of Georgia, finding an interval of peace amid their own quarrels and with northern, western, and central Persia secure. The Persians demanded Erikal II to renounce the treaty with Russia and to reaccept Persian suzerainty, in return for peace and the security of his kingdom. The Ottomans, Iran's neighboring rival, recognized the latter's rights over Kartli and Kakheti for the first time in four centuries. Erikal appealed then to his theoretical protector, Empress Catherine II of Russia, asking for at least 3,000 Russian troops, but he was ignored, leaving Georgia to fend off the Persian threat alone. Nevertheless, Erikal II still rejected Aga Muhammad Khan's ultimatum. In August 1795, Aga Muhammad Khan crossed the Aras River, and after a turn of events by which he gathered more support from his subordinate Khans of Erevan and Ganja, and having re secured the territories up to including parts of Dagestan in the north and up to the westernmost border of modern day Armenia in the west, he sent Erikal the last ultimatum, which he also declined, but sent couriers to St. Petersburg. Budovich, who sat in Georgievska at the time, instructed Erikal to avoid expense and fuss, while Erikal, together with Solomon II and some Imeritians headed southwards of Tbilisi to fend off the Iranians, with half of the troops Aga Muhammad Khan crossed the Aras River with, he now marched directly upon Tbilisi, where it commenced into a huge battle between the Iranian and Georgian armies. Erikal had managed to mobilize some 5,000 troops, including some 2,000 from neighboring Imereti under its King Solomon II. The Georgians, hopelessly outnumbered, were eventually defeated despite stiff resistance. In a few hours, the Iranian king Aga Muhammad Khan was in full control of the Georgian capital. The Persian army marched back laden with spoil and carrying off many thousands of captives. By this, after the conquest of Tbilisi and being in effective control of eastern Georgia, Aga Muhammad was formally crowned Shah in 1796 in the Mughan Plain. As the Cambridge History of Iran notes, Russia's client, Georgia, had been punished, and Russia's prestige, damaged. Erikal II returned to Tbilisi to rebuild the city, but the destruction of his capital was a death blow to his hopes and projects. 
Upon learning of the fall of Tbilisi General Gudovich put the blame on the Georgians themselves. To restore Russian prestige, Catherine II declared war on Persia, upon the proposal of Gudovich, and sent an army under Valerian Zubov to the Qajar possessions on April of that year, but the new Tsar Paul I, who succeeded Catherine in November, shortly recalled it. Aga Muhammad Shah was later assassinated while preparing a second expedition against Georgia in 1797 in Shusha. Reassessment of Iranian hegemony over Georgia did not last long. In 1799, the Russians marched into Tbilisi, two years after Aga Muhammad Khan's death. The next two years were a time of muddle and confusion, and the weakened and devastated Georgian kingdom, with its capital half in ruins, was easily absorbed by Russia in 1801. As Iran could not permit or allow the cession of Transcaucasia and Dagestan, which had formed part of the concept of Iran for centuries, it would also directly lead up to the wars of even several years later, namely the Russo-Persian War (1804–1813) and Russo-Persian War (1826–1828), which would eventually prove for the irrevocable forced cession of aforementioned regions to Imperial Russia per the Treaties of Gulistan (1813) and Turkmenche (1828), as the ancient ties could only be severed by a superior force from outside. It was therefore also inevitable that Aga Muhammad Khan's successor, Fath Ali Shah under whom Iran would lead the two above-mentioned wars would follow the same policy of restoring Iranian central authority north of the Aras and Kura rivers. <laughs> wars with Russia and irrevocable loss of territories On 12 September 1801, four years after Aga Muhammad Khan Qajar's death, the Russians capitalized on the moment, and annexed Kartli Kakheti Eastern Georgia. In 1804, the Russians invaded and sacked the Iranian town of Ganja, massacring and expelling thousands of its inhabitants, thereby beginning the Russo-Persian War of 1804–1813. Under Fath Ali Shah r. 1797 the Qajars set out to fight against the invading Russian Empire, who were keen to take the Iranian territories in the region. This period marked the first major economic and military encroachments on Iranian interests during the colonial era. The Qajar army suffered a major military defeat in the war, and under the terms of the Treaty of Gulistan in 1813, Iran was forced to cede most of its Caucasian territories comprising modern-day Georgia, Dagestan, and most of Azerbaijan. About a decade later, in violation of the Gulistan Treaty, the Russians invaded Iran's Erevan Khanate. This sparked the final bout of hostilities between the two, the Russo-Persian War of 1826-1828. It ended even more disastrously for Qajar Iran with temporary occupation of Tabriz and the signing of the Treaty of Turkmenche in 1828, acknowledging Russian sovereignty over the entire South Caucasus and Dagestan, as well as therefore the ceding of what is nowadays Armenia and the remaining part of Republic of Azerbaijan. The new border between neighboring Russia and Iran were set at the Aras River. Iran had by these two treaties, in the course of the 19th century, irrevocably lost the territories which had formed part of the concept of Iran for centuries. The area to the north of the river Aras, among which the territory of the contemporary Republic of Azerbaijan, eastern Georgia, Dagestan, and Armenia were Iranian territory until they were occupied by Russia in the course of the 19th century. As a further direct result and consequence of the Gulistan and Turkmenche treaties of 1813 and 1828 respectively, the formerly Iranian territories became now part of Russia for around the next 180 years, except Dagestan, which remained a Russian possession ever since. Out of the greater part of the territory, three separate nations would be formed through the dissolution of the Soviet Union in 1991, namely Georgia, Azerbaijan and Armenia. Lastly and equally important, as a result of Russia's imposing of the two treaties, it also decisively parted the Azerbaijanis and Talish ever since between two nations. Topic. Migration of Caucasian Muslims Following the official losing of the aforementioned vast territories in the Caucasus, major demographic shifts were bound to take place. Solidly Persian-speaking territories of Iran were lost, with all its inhabitants in it. Following the 1804–1814 war, but also per the 1826–1828 war which ceded the last territories, large migrations, so-called Caucasian Mahahirs, set off to migrate to mainland Iran. Some of these groups included the Arams, Karapapaks, Circassians, Shia Lesgins, and other Transcaucasian Muslims. 
Through the Battle of Ganja of 1804 during the Russo-Persian War 1804 many thousands of Arams and Karapapaks were settled in Tabriz. During the remaining part of the 1804–1813 war, as well as through the 1826–1828 war, the absolute bulk of the Arams and Karapapaks that were still remaining in newly conquered Russian territories were settled in and migrated to Soldas in modern-day Iran's West Azerbaijan province. As the Cambridge History of Iran states, "...the steady encroachment of Russian troops along the frontier in the Caucasus, General Yermolov's brutal punitive expeditions and misgovernment, drove large numbers of Muslims, and even some Georgian Christians, into exile in Iran." In 1864 until the early 20th century, another mass expulsion took place of Caucasian Muslims as a result of the Russian victory in the Caucasian War. Others simply voluntarily refused to live under Christian Russian rule, and thus disembarked for Turkey or Iran. These migrations once again, towards Iran, included masses of Caucasian Azerbaijanis, other Transcaucasian Muslims, as well as many North Caucasian Muslims, such as Circassians, Shia Lesgans and Laks. Many of these migrants would prove to play a pivotal role in further Iranian history, as they formed most of the ranks of the Persian Cossack Brigade, which was also to be established in the late 19th century. The initial ranks of the brigade would be entirely composed of Circassians and other Caucasian Mahahirs. This brigade would prove decisive in the following decades to come in Qajar history. Furthermore, the 1828 Treaty of Turkmenche included the official rights for the Russian Empire to encourage settling of Armenians from Iran in the newly conquered Russian territories. Until the mid-14th century, Armenians had constituted a majority in eastern Armenia. At the close of the 14th century, after Timur's campaigns, Islam had become the dominant faith, and Armenians became a minority in eastern Armenia. After centuries of constant warfare on the Armenian plateau, many Armenians chose to emigrate and settle elsewhere. Following Shah Abbas I's massive relocation of Armenians and Muslims in 1604–05, their numbers dwindled even further. At the time of the Russian invasion of Iran, some 80% of the population of Iranian Armenia were Muslims Persians, Turkics, and Kurds whereas Christian Armenians constituted a minority of about 20%. As a result of the Treaty of Gulistan 1813 and the Treaty of Turkmenche 1828, Iran was forced to cede Iranian Armenia which also constituted the present-day Armenia, to the Russians. After the Russian administration took hold of Iranian Armenia, the ethnic makeup shifted, and thus for the first time in more than four centuries, ethnic Armenians started to form a majority once again in one part of historic Armenia. The new Russian administration encouraged the settling of ethnic Armenians from Iran proper and Ottoman Turkey. As a result, by 1832, the number of ethnic Armenians had matched that of the Muslims. It would be only after the Crimean War and the Russo-Turkish War of 1877-1878, which brought another influx of Turkish Armenians, that ethnic Armenians once again established a solid majority in eastern Armenia. Nevertheless, the city of Erevan retained a Muslim majority up to the 20th century. According to the traveler HFB Lynch, the city was about 50% Armenian and 50% Muslim Azerbaijanis and Persians in the early 1890s. Fath Ali Shah's reign saw increased diplomatic contacts with the West and the beginning of intense European diplomatic rivalries over Iran. His grandson Muhammad Shah, who fell under the Russian influence and made two unsuccessful attempts to capture Herat, succeeded him in 1834. When Muhammad Shah died in 1848 the succession passed to his son Nasser-e-Din, who proved to be the ablest and most successful of the Qajar sovereigns. He founded the first modern hospital in Iran. Topic. Development and decline During Nasser-e-Din Shah's reign, Western science, technology, and educational methods were introduced into Persia and the country's modernization was begun. Nasser-ed-Din Shah tried to exploit the mutual distrust between Great Britain and Russia to preserve Persia's independence, but foreign interference and territorial encroachment increased under his rule. He was not able to prevent Britain and Russia from encroaching into regions of traditional Persian influence. In 1856, during the Anglo-Persian War, Britain prevented Persia from reasserting control over Herat. The city had been part of Persia in Safavid times, but Herat had been under non-Persian rule since the mid-18th century. 
Britain also extended its control to other areas of the Persian Gulf during the 19th century. Meanwhile, by 1881, Russia had completed its conquest of present-day Turkmenistan and Uzbekistan, bringing Russia's frontier to Persia's northeastern borders and severing historic Persian ties to the cities of Bukhara and Samarkand. Several trade concessions by the Persian government put economic affairs largely under British control. By the late 19th century, many Persians believed that their rulers were beholden to foreign interests. Mirza Taghi Khan Amir Kabir, was the young prince Nasser e Din's advisor and constable. With the death of Muhammad Shah in 1848, Mirza Taki was largely responsible for ensuring the crown prince's succession to the throne. When Nasser ed Din succeeded to the throne, Amir Nezim was awarded the position of prime minister and the title of Amir Kabir, the great ruler. At that time, Persia was nearly bankrupt. During the next two and a half years Amir Kabir initiated important reforms in virtually all sectors of society. Government expenditure was slashed, and a distinction was made between the private and public purses. The instruments of central administration were overhauled, and Amir Kabir assumed responsibility for all areas of the bureaucracy. Foreign interference in Persia's domestic affairs was curtailed, and foreign trade was encouraged. Public works such as the bazaar in Tehran were undertaken. Amir Kabir issued an edict banning ornate and excessively formal writing in government documents. The beginning of a modern Persian prose style dates from this time. One of the greatest achievements of Amir Kabir was the building of Dar o el Fanun in 1851, the first modern university in Persia and the Middle East. Dar o el Fanun was established for training a new cadre of administrators and acquainting them with Western techniques. It marked the beginning of modern education in Persia. Amir Kabir ordered the school to be built on the edge of the city so it could be expanded as needed. He hired French and Russian instructors as well as Persians to teach subjects as different as language, medicine, law, geography, history, economics, and engineering, amongst numerous others. Unfortunately, Amir Kabir did not live long enough to see his greatest monument completed, but it still stands in Tehran as a sign of a great man's ideas for the future of his country. These reforms antagonized various notables who had been excluded from the government. They regarded the Amir Kabir as a social upstart and a threat to their interests, and they formed a coalition against him, in which the Queen Mother was active. She convinced the young Shah that Amir Kabir wanted to usurp the throne. In October 1851, the Shah dismissed him and exiled him to Kashan, where he was murdered on the Shah's orders. Through his marriage to Ezit ad Dola, Amir Kabir had been the brother-in-law of the Shah. Topic. Constitutional Revolution When Nasser al-Din Shah Qajar was assassinated by Mirza Reza Kermani in 1896, the crown passed to his son Mazafar e din Mazafar e din Shah was a moderate, but relatively ineffective ruler. Royal extravagances coincided with an inadequate ability to secure state revenue which further exacerbated the financial woes of the Qajar. In response, the Shah procured two large loans from Russia, in part to fund personal trips to Europe. Public anger mounted as the Shah sold off concessions, such as road-building monopolies, authority to collect duties on imports, etc. to European interests in return for generous payments to the Shah and his officials. Popular demand to curb arbitrary royal authority in favor of rule of law increased as concern regarding growing foreign penetration and influence heightened. The Shah's failure to respond to protests by the religious establishment, the merchants, and other classes led the merchants and clerical leaders in January 1906 to take sanctuary from probable arrest in mosques in Tehran and outside the capital. When the Shah reneged on a promise to permit the establishment of a house of justice or consultative assembly, 10,000 people, led by the merchants, took sanctuary in June in the compound of the British legation in Tehran. In August, the Shah, through the issue of a decree promised a constitution. In October, an elected assembly convened and drew up a constitution that provided for strict limitations on royal power, an elected parliament, or majils, with wide powers to represent the people, and a government with a cabinet subject to confirmation by the majils. The Shah signed the constitution on December 30, 1906, but refusing to forfeit all of his power to the Majils, attached a caveat that made his signature on all laws required for their enactment. He died five days later. 
The Supplementary Fundamental Laws approved in 1907 provided, within limits, for freedom of press, speech, and association, and for security of life and property. The hopes for constitutional rule were not realized, however. Mazafar e Din Shah's son Muhammad Ali Shah reigned 1907 who, through his mother, was also the grandson of Prime Minister Amir Kabir see before, with the aid of Russia, attempted to rescind the constitution and abolish parliamentary government. After several disputes with the members of the Majils, in June 1908 he used his Russian officered Persian Cossack Brigade almost solely composed of Caucasian Mahahirs, to bomb the Majlis building, arrest many of the deputies December 1907, and close down the assembly June 1908. Resistance to the Shah, however, coalesced in Tabriz, Isfahan, Rasht, and elsewhere. In July 1909, constitutional forces marched from Rosh to Tehran led by Muhammad Vali Khan Sapasalar Kalatbari Tonikaboni, deposed the Shah, and re-established the constitution. The ex-Shah went into exile in Russia. Shah died in San Remo, Italy, in April 1925. Every future Shah of Iran would also die in exile. On 16 July 1909, the Majils voted to place Muhammad Ali Shah's 11-year-old son, Ahmad Shah on the throne. Although the constitutional forces had triumphed, they faced serious difficulties. The upheavals of the constitutional revolution and civil war had undermined stability and trade. In addition, the ex-Shah, with Russian support, attempted to regain his throne, landing troops in July 1910. Most serious of all, the hope that the constitutional revolution would inaugurate a new era of independence from the great powers ended when, under the Anglo-Russian Entente of 1907, Britain and Russia agreed to divide Persia into spheres of influence. The Russians were to enjoy exclusive right to pursue their interests in the northern sphere, the British in the south and east, both powers would be free to compete for economic and political advantage in a neutral sphere in the center. Matters came to a head when Morgan Shuster, a United States administrator hired as Treasurer General by the Persian government to reform its finances, sought to collect taxes from powerful officials who were Russian protégés and to send members of the Treasury Gendarmerie, a tax department police force, into the Russian zone. When in December 1911 the Majlis unanimously refused a Russian ultimatum demanding Shuster's dismissal, Russian troops, already in the country, moved to occupy the capital. To prevent this, on 20 December, Bakhtiari chiefs, and their troops surrounded the Majils building, forced acceptance of the Russian ultimatum, and shut down the assembly, once again suspending the constitution. <laughs> <laughs> World War I and related events Though Qajar Iran had announced strict neutrality on the first day of November 1914 which was reiterated by each successive government thereafter, the neighboring Ottoman Empire invaded it relatively shortly after, in the same year. At that time, large parts of Iran were under tight Russian influence and control, and since 1910 Russian forces were present inside the country, while many of its cities possessed Russian garrisons. Due to the latter reason, as Professor Dr. Toraj Adabaki states, declaring neutrality was useless, especially as Iran had no force to implement this policy. At the beginning of the war, the Ottomans invaded Iranian Azerbaijan. Numerous clashes would take place there between the Russians, who were further aided by the Assyrians under Aga Petros as well as Armenian volunteer units and battalions, and the Ottomans on the other side. However, with the advent of the Russian Revolution of 1917 and the subsequent withdrawal of most of the Russian troops, the Ottomans gained the clear upper hand in Iran, and annexed large parts of it for some time. Between 1914–1918, the Ottoman troops massacred many thousands of Iran's Assyrian and Armenian population, as part of the Assyrian and Armenian genocides, respectively. The front in Iran would last up to the Armistice of Mudros in 1918. Topic. Fall of the dynasty Ahmad Shah Qajar was born 21 January 1898 in Tabriz, and succeeded to the throne at age 11. However, the occupation of Persia during World War I by Russian, British, and Ottoman troops was a blow from which Ahmad Shah never effectively recovered. In February 1921, Reza Khan, commander of the Persian Cossack Brigade, staged a coup d'état, becoming the effective ruler of Iran. In 1923, Ahmad Shah went into exile in Europe. 
Reza Khan induced the Majils to depose Ahmad Shah in October 1925, and to exclude the Qajar dynasty permanently. Reza Khan was subsequently proclaimed monarch as Reza Shah Pahlavi, reigning from 1925 to 1941. Ahmad Shah died on the 21st of February 1930 in Neuilly-sur-Seine, France. Topic: <laughs> Qajar Shahs of Persia, 1794 to 1925. Topic: <laughs> Qajar Imperial Family. The Qajar imperial family in exile is currently headed by the eldest descendant of Muhammad Ali Shah, Sultan Muhammad Ali Mirza Qajar, while the heir presumptive to the Qajar throne is Muhammad Hassan Mirza II, the grandson of Muhammad Hassan Mirza, Sultan Ahmad Shah's brother and heir. Muhammad Hassan Mirza died in England in 1943, having proclaimed himself Shah in exile in 1930 after the death of his brother in France. Today, the descendants of the Qajars often identify themselves as such and hold reunions to stay socially acquainted through the Qajar family association, often coinciding with the annual conferences and meetings of the International Qajar Studies Association The Qajar family association was founded for a third time in 2000. Two earlier family associations were stopped because of political pressure. The offices and archives of IQSA are housed at the International Museum for Family History in Eisden. Topic: <inaudible> Titles and Styles. The Shah and his consort were styled Imperial Majesty. Their children were addressed as Imperial Highness, while male line grandchildren were entitled to the lower style of Highness. All of them bore the title of Shahzada or Shahzada Khanum. Topic. Qajar dynasty since 1925 Heads of the Qajar imperial familyth headship of the imperial family is inherited by the eldest male descendant of Muhammad Ali Shah. Sultan Ahmad Shah Qajar Faridun Mirza Sultan Hamid Mirza Sultan Mahmud Mirza 1988 Sultan Ali Mirza Qajar 1988 to 2011 Sultan Muhammad Ali Mirza 2011 present heirs presumptive of the Qajar dynasty the heir presumptive as the Qajar heir to the Persian throne Sultan Ahmad Shah Qajar 1925 to 1930 Muhammad Hassan Mirza 1930 to 1943 Faridun Mirza 1943 to 1975 Sultan Hamid Mirza 1975 to 1988 Muhammad Hassan Mirza II 1988 to 1996 Shahzade Aryan J Salari I 1996 present Topic Notable members Politics Prince Abdal Hossein Farman Farma 1859 to 1939 Prime Minister of Iran Mohammad Mosaddegh, Prime Minister of Iran and nephew of Prince Abdal Hossein Mirza Farmanfarma. Prince Farooz Nosrat ed Dawla III, son of Prince Abdal Hossein Farmanfarma, Foreign Minister of Iran. Hossein Khan Sardar, last ruler of the Erevan Khanate Administrative Division. Amir Abbas Huveyda, Iranian economist and politician, Prime Minister of Iran from 1965 to 1977, a Qajar descendant on his maternal side Ali Amini, Prime Minister of Iran Prince Araj Eskandari, Iranian communist politician Princess Maryam Farman Farmayan B. 1914 D. 2008, Iranian communist politician, founder of the women's section of the Tuday Party of Iran Ardashir Zahidi B. 1928, Iranian diplomat, Qajar descendant on his maternal side. Prince Sabar Farmanfarmayan, health minister in Mossadegh cabinet. Abdal Hossein Sardari (1895–1981), consul general at the Iranian embassy in Paris (1940–1945), helped and saved the lives of Jews in danger of deportation by issuing them with Iranian passports. 
a Qajar Kovanlu and through his mother a grandson of Princess Malekzada Khanum Ezzat ad Dola, the sister of Nasser ed Din Shah, military prince Amanullah Mirza Qajar, Imperial Russian, Azerbaijani, and Iranian military commander. Prince Faidullah Mirza Qajar, Imperial Russian and Azerbaijani ADR military commander. Prince Alexander Reza Koli Mirza Qajar, Imperial Russian military leader, commander of Yekaterinburg 1918. Prince Amanullah Jahanbani, senior Iranian general Nader Jahanbani, general and vice deputy chief of the Imperial Iranian Air Force Social Work Princess Satara Farmanfarmayan, Iranian social work pioneer business Princess Fakhr Ol Dalwomen's rights Princess Motoram Eskandari, intellectual and pioneering figures in Iranian women's movement. Dr. Iran Taymortash 1991 journalist, editor and publisher of Rastaki's newspaper, founder of an association for helping destitute women. Daughter of court minister Abdalhussein Taymortash and through both her maternal grandparents a Qajar, literature Prince Iraj 1874 Iranian poet and translator Princess Lobat Vala b. 1930, Iranian poet and campaigner for the women liberation Sharnish Parsipur, Iranian novelist, a Qajar descendant on her maternal side Sadej Hedayat, a Qajar descendant through the female line entertainment Sarah Shahi, an American actress, a Qajar descendant on her paternal side Golam Hossein Banan, Iranian musician and singer, Qajar descendant on his maternal side topic See also Abdalhussein Taymortash Austro-Hungarian military mission in Persia Bahmani family history of Iran Khanates of the Caucasus List of Kings of Persia List of Shia Muslims Dynasties Mirza Kauchik Khan History of the Caucasus Qajar Art topic References topic Sources Atabaki, Toraj 2006. Iran and the First World War, Battleground of the Great Powers. I. B. Tories. ISBN 978-1860649646. Aminant, Abbas Pivot of the Universe, Nasir al-Din Shah Qajar and the Iranian Monarchy, 1831–1896. I.B. Tories. ISBN 9781860640000. Tories. Abbas Nasir. Bornushin, George A. The population of Persian Armenia prior to and immediately following its annexation to the Russian Empire, 1826–1832. The Wilson Center, Kennan Institute for Advanced Russian Studies. Bornushin, George A. 2002. A Concise History of the Armenian People, From Ancient Times to the Present 2 ed., Mazda Publishers. ISBN 978-1568591414. Dowling, Timothy C. 2014. Russia at War, From the Mongol Conquest to Afghanistan, Chechnya, and Beyond. Two volumes. ABC Clio. ISBN 978-1598849486. Fisher, William Bain, Avery, P. Hambly, G. R. G., Melville, C. The Cambridge History of Iran, 7. Cambridge, Cambridge University Press. ISBN 0521200954. Hitchens, Keith. E. R. E. K. L. E. 2. Encyclopedia Iranica, Vol. 8, FASC, 5. pp. 541-542. Holt, P. M., Lambton, Anne K. S., Lewis, Bernard. The Cambridge History of Islam. Cambridge, Cambridge University Press. ISBN 978-0521291361. Kettenhofen, Eric, Bornushin, George A., Husen, Robert H. Erevan. Encyclopedia Iranica, Vol. 8, FASC, 5. pp. 542-551. Cohn, George C. Dictionary of Wars. Infobase Publishing. ISBN 978-1438129167. Maccabi Rides, Alexander 2011. Conflict and Conquest in the Islamic World, a Historical Encyclopedia, 1. ABC Clio. ISBN 1598843362. Hall, Ian 2015. Historical Dictionary of Georgia, 2 ed. Roman and Littlefield. ISBN 978-1442241466.
Vazdev, Nicholas K., Imperial Policies and Perspectives Towards Georgia, 1760–1819 Macmillan, Basingstoke 2000, ISBN 0-312-22990-9 Lang, David M., The Last Years of the Georgian Monarchy, 1658–1832, Columbia University Press, New York 1957 Paydar, Parvin 1997. Women and the Political Process in Twentieth-Century Iran. Cambridge, Cambridge University Press. ISBN 9780521595. Kaplan, Sarah M. 1991. The Zand Dynasty. The Cambridge History of Iran, Volume 7, From Nadir Shah to the Islamic Republic. Cambridge, Cambridge University Press. pp. 63-104. ISBN 9780521200900. Kaplan, Sarah M. 1994. The Making of the Georgian Nation. Indiana University Press. ISBN 978-0253209153. External links The Qajar Kajar pages The International Qajar Studies Association Dar o el Qajar Qajar Family Website Royal Ark Qajar Website by Christopher Byers Royal Ark Qajar Website by Christopher Byers Some photos of Qajar family members Women's Worlds in Qajar Iran Digital Archive by Harvard University Kajar Documentation Fund Collection at the International Institute of Social History